You're listening to another life-transforming message from Awakened Church with campuses in San Diego and Salt Lake City. To find out more about us, go to awakenchurch.com. We give it up for our worship team. Give them a round of applause. Amazing. Thank you, team. I'll have you guys back up here. Same thing as last service. It's going to be a great service. Who's happy to be in the house of God this morning? Come on. Now, I always like to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Make it plain. Shame the devil. Okay? Uh, we are a engaging and a feedback rowdy church. And you say, well, why, why do we do that? Why? You know, I remember when I first came to a, an awakened church over 10 years ago, and I was like, hey, hey, quiet, guys. He's trying to talk. You keep yelling and interrupting. I thought, I thought people were being rude, and then I realized, wait, no. Uh, the f- people in the front row are doing that. Like, they're all doing that. Why are they doing that? Because we actually believe that the word of God is to be met with engagement, is to be met with excitement. You know, have, all of us have our thing we get excited about. You know, whether it's like, uh, what are, Notre Dame football, thank you. I'm with you there, Andy. It could be Notre Dame football. It could be, uh, what is it? Texas Hold'em on TV. I don't know what gets you excited. You know, when you see those pocket aces, yeah! You know, I don't know what it is that gets you pumped, but the word of God should be met with a response. You know, Nehemiah talks about when they, they hadn't heard the law in so long that when they went, that the people began just to, to weep and praise because it was like, oh, these are the words of God. So we celebrate the word of God. So you're not shouting because I'm insecure. And if you don't say amen, I'll, I'll cry after this. It's none of that. It's that we are engaging with the word of God. Also, so that's just, you know, that's a culture thing. But also, did you know that if you listen, you'll retain 20 to 30%. If you take notes, which I highly recommend, you should also have a notebook, take notes, you'll retain 50 to 60. If you engage with the message, if you stand up on a good point, you clap, you put your body into it, your synapses in your brain will change and you can retain about 80% of what's said. So you're not that person when, you know, your friend says, oh, how was church? Well, the pastor preached on, they're like, uh, it was good. I felt love. What was it about? the Bible. You know what I mean? Like it's good. Yeah. Hey, we've all been there, right? Who's been there before? I've been there. Like I've been at church. I've, I've preached and I'll say that. Like a week later, I'll be like, I don't, I don't really know. No. Anyways. All right. So we're an engaging culture. You can have fun. You can shout down. Uh, you know, I know it's, it's scary. If, it's, if you've never done it, I just try it. Just try this week. When, it, when it's like a point like, oh, that got me. Don't just, you know, do this. Oh, that was really you know, in your head, you're like, wow, I'm being so impacted. But, you know, give it a little amen, preach it, white boy, whatever you want to say, okay? <clears throat> so the title of my message today is called The Test. It's called The Test. Like I said, I didn't sync up with uh, uh, John Day and the worship team, and they planned the songs, and I didn't sync up with Natalie on her message, but the Holy Spirit's so good. So I know this is a, for a fact. God wants to release breakthrough, breakthrough, today in this house. Okay, there is a breakthrough anointing, and my message is on that. <clears throat> so we're going to jump right into the Bible. Let me give you some context here. This, we're going to talk about King David. If you don't know David's story, probably most of you have heard the part where he killed the giant. What you might not know is that he was also prophesied to be the king of Israel, and so <clears throat> prophesied a long time ago. So we're fast forwarding. He was prophesied when he was in his teens. Now he is in his, he's 30, and in this time, he's killed a giant became very popular. Then the king, current king, King Saul, got jealous and has been hunting him with assassins for many, 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 many years now, okay? And in that time, he's built his own army. They're called the Mighty Men. There's 600 men with them. They were known as the Mighty Men. These guys also killed giants. So David was the first giant killer. He made giant killers. These guys tripped and fell into pits with lions and came out with a lion's skull ripped in half, okay? These guys were, were bad dudes, these guys would fight in a field over lentils. Who fights for lentils? Okay, let them, let them go. Who needs <laughs> lentils? You want my lentil soup? Go ahead. I wasn't gonna eat it anyways. But these guys are willing to die over lentils. These guys are bad dudes, okay? And they've been fighting, but they've also been on the run from King Saul. And they've, they've been looking now. Th- so they start out, they, have a, they don't have a country, okay? They've lost their country. They're not fighting for Israel anymore. Now they're just trying to like fight for hire and no one will fight with them. Not even their enemies will take them for hire even though they're the greatest. So they're they're an army with no country and no battle, okay? And so they're coming back to their camp pretty defeated in the sense that it's like, what are we doing here? 
And this is when they land here at the camp. <clears throat> and uh, you ever been to a place where it seems like it couldn't, you say, man, it couldn't get any worse. And then you're like, oh, shoot. <laughs> this is that moment. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, attacked Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were from small, or those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but they carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was burning with fire and their wives and sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. David's two wife, two wives have been taken, uh, as well as or all of his wives have been taken. And now verse six, now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters, but David strengthened himself in the Lord. I want to read another verse, Deuteronomy 31, 8. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. I believe that actually David probably, if not that verse, this is where he went. He went and needed to get a word from the Lord. Because at this point, first he's a king with no, he's prophesied to be a king with no kingdom and assassinate him. Then he's uh, an, a general with no country to fight with. Now he's a king and general with no men. This is, this is rock bottom. This is exactly the opposite of what the prophet Samuel prophesied over him years and years ago. Nothing looks like it was supposed to look. This is his zigzag. Okay, and today I feel that people in this house, there are people in this room that you are in your zigzag. You are in your moment where you're like, this doesn't look like I thought it would look. Maybe your marriage, you're saying, you know, I remember the white dress and, and the, you know, the cake and, and the dance. This is not how I thought it was going to look. Maybe your kids, oh, I remember when they were born and, you know, all this hope and like, what is going on? They're off the rocker. Maybe, maybe your health, maybe you've, you know, you've gotten a report from the doctor like, this does not look this. There are people in this room that you are in your zigzag. Now, here's the crazy thing that David doesn't know, but we get to know because we can jump ahead a couple chapters. Okay, we get to see things in hindsight is 2020. So I'm always fascinated to remember that none of these guys know they're in the Bible at the time. Do you know what I mean? Like none of them know like, oh, I'm gonna, this is gonna be a story. They don't know that God's writing a story with their life. They don't know the future. See, we have to remember the context because I'm blown away. Like David sh should have quit. Like he should have quit. That just does, it doesn't make sense. He should say, hey, that Samuel guy, that prophet guy, dumped the oil on my head, said I was gonna be king. He crazy, okay? The one thing I did to try to jump into that, I killed that giant and now I'm getting assassins hunting me all, you know, for, for seven years. Now I've been hunted down. Why did I listen to that guy? He should have quit. This is why I wanna preach this message, okay? The test. I have seen this in my Christian walk over and over, and it is always the zigzag. That is the moment before breakthrough is the zigzag. I see it constantly. When you're stepping into your destiny, when you're stepping into what God has for you, when you're stepping into a next level, there is always a test before the trust. That's just how it works. The word of God will be tested. In fact, let me jump to a verse right here. It says, Psalms 1830. As for God, his ways are perfect. The word of the Lord is tested and tried. It's tested and tried. See, we camp on the word of God, and then, but to carry the, the full anointing, to carry what God actually has for you, there's always this testing of the word. And I see it take Christians out more and more. And I just wanna speak to this for a minute. God is not looking for apathetic Christians. There's no one in the Bible where it says, you know, God just looked down and he saw the most passive man in the world and he said, hey, hey, Gabriel, look at his passivity. I will, the passivity is what I wanna bless. God is not looking for passivity and there's this undertone in Calvinism that kind of messes things up, okay? I'm just, uh, let, me, let me kick the sacred calf, okay? I, yes, I understand. God is enthroned and knows the beginning from the end. 
He's all powerful. I'm not diminishing him. But here on earth, we are in a faith dance with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Why would he say, I'm looking for faith? It doesn't take any faith to say whatever happens will happen and that God's in charge of that. Yes, overarching, we know God's good and all that, but he looks for people that are willing to engage with him and actually take steps and use their faith to bring dominion and power on earth. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Vince. I, when I say, you know, I say, hey, you know, somebody says, ah, you know, we've, we've got another kid on the way and we're believing for a house with a yard. And they say, you know, but just whatever God wants. I'm like, well, did you call a loan agent yet? Have you, have you collected your W-2s? How, no, just, just if God wants it, he wants it. No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we need God's blessing in everything we do. Yes, he needs to be in the driver's seat. But you gotta make a call. You gotta take a step. You gotta pray and ask him, God, is this your will for me? Is this your will? And then if he says yes, then you engage and you go every you go forward with the word. Let me explain, let me, let me go into David's scenario. It says in verse, uh, we're going back to 1 Samuel 30, verse seven. And it says that, or sorry, verse eight, go to verse eight. So David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue the troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue. You shall surely overtake them. Without fail, without fail, recover all. Guess what David did right after this? He mounted up the army, grabbed his swords and spears, and he went to battle on the word of God. He went to battle on the word of God. God didn't fight the fight for him. God said, if you'll fight the fight, you'll surely win. If you wanna go get your stuff, go get your stuff. But he didn't fight the fight. Come on, some people, I'm, I'm rattling the cages. Passivity is not faith. Passivity and saying, you know what? I'll just trust God, but I'm not gonna actually look for his word and act on his word and get a word. That's not faith. That's, that's you just obligating your responsibility. Just just passing your responsibility. God is looking for a people. God is looking for a people who will believe him and pursue him. So uh, breakthrough anointing is here. Breakthrough anointing is here, but, but the action is I need to get a word for that situation. So let, let me give you another example. Maybe you want to have a baby, or maybe you at one point want to have a baby. There's the, there's the pray and say, hey, should we, do, should we have, there's the planning, there's all that. But, you know, when me and my wife decided to want to have a baby, I didn't go to her and say, hey, baby, if it's the Lord's will, you'll just end up pregnant. No, sir, I had a job to do. <laughs> I'll leave it there. If that went over your head. There's an action step. There's an action step here on earth. And if you're married, it's good, okay? Sorry, babe. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> I just want to crush that. Listen, and John Day, you did such a great job. It's recognizing your authority in Christ. It's recognizing your authority in Christ. I just want to stop for a minute. I just love these two. Mazin and Jillian, welcome to church, by the way. Come on. These are friends from San Diego. I'm just going to write in the podcast, man. It's going to be in the podcast how much I love you two. I didn't want to do it before. They could cut it out. I want, I want the world to know. You guys are awesome. Okay. Zigzag, you're in the zigzag. Zigzag is not when you sit still. We're in a message series called uh, Let Us Pray. And I just wanted to crush this thing of prayer is not, well, I just, God, if you would just maybe, whatever your will, what it, you know, yes, I want his will. But he's looking for you to grab his word, to grab his word. The rhema and the logos. Okay, rhema is a fresh word. It's, a re, it's like, a, like a prophetic word. Logos is, is the already written word. He's looking for you to get his word. Like David said, shall I pursue? And God said, yes. And then he's looking for you to take full action on that word. Whether that looks like, and if you don't know how to pray with authority, that's why we have men's prayer every Friday at t or every Tuesday, Tuesday at 5.30 and women's prayer Thursday at 6.30 in the morning. You're like, oh, that's so early. It's good. It's good. It's worth it. This isn't a kumbaya circle. This is where we will teach you to prophesy and pray with authority. We prophesy over each other so we get a fresh word. 
We get a fresh word. Proverbs 28.1 says, the wicked flee when there's no one, when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as lions. I just want to crush this. Breakthrough is you stepping into, okay, God, what's the fight? What's the fight? And when he says that's the fight, then you're, you are like a pit bull. Then you latch on and you say, I'm not gonna let go until I see something happen. I'm going to push. Pray until something happens. It's a good book. You should read it. Okay. What? Zigzag. It's fascinating here. If you look up Zigzag, the word actually translates. God loves to prophesy. So like I said, David doesn't know he's in the Bible. He does not know that. He does not know that you know, God is using his story to prophesy about the coming Messiah. He does not know the full plan yet. He just gets the word, shall I pursue? The Bible prophesies over and over and over. So God's so intentional. So of all the places he picks Ziglag, Ziglag's translated means, I'm gonna read it perfect for you. Measure pressed down. Measure pressed down. Now, when I saw that, I said, man, that sounds familiar. You know, I've, I've gotten through at least the first three books on my one-year Bible. You know, I got, I think I got to that verse in January. Where's that in? So, just giving, come on. Come on. How many people have decided to read a Bible a year and you've read Genesis a lot? Like every year, right? <laughs> you get to Lamentations or Deuteronomy, you're like, oh boy, we're, be, we're behind a couple days. <laughs> Around July, you're like, um... I'm just going to skip to the day it is now. <laughs> you missed all the kings. Okay, yeah, we've all been there. We've all been there. All right, Ziglag, a measure pressed down. Luke 6, 38 says this, give and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down. Shake together, running over. It will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Listen, <clears throat> God will not be mocked. Whatever you have sown in his house, the relationship you have, there's a promise that it, it, that is going to come back. And so if you're in your zigzag and you said, you know, I've been, I've been sowing, I'm going to church. I've been sowing, I'm volunteering. I've been sowing, I, I, I do tithe, I, I tithe. You know, I've been sowing. And, and, you, and you're like, where is it? Just know that you're probably in a zigzag. Okay, where God is preparing to give you it, shake down, press down, overflowing. And I see so many Christians, they bail in the zigzag. You know what's crazy? David at this point was three days away from becoming king. Three days. I said two in the last service. If you were there, I apologize. I forgot that they spent one day fighting. So it's actually three, which is perfect. It's three days away from becoming king. Right here. But right before that, it looked like everything was coming apart. And God needs to create in you a staying power, a, a, a courage, because he doesn't want the blessing to become a curse. Understand that with new levels of blessing also come new levels of responsibility. And there's some things you have to do. And so as we talk about our, pray, our prayer series, I wanna talk about three points here on things, why we pray and what we should also pray for. But just know that when you foster a life of prayer, these things become a byproduct of it, but you should also pray for it. So point number one, like David, we need to pray for strength. We need to pray for strength. We always have a test before a trust. The, the parable of the talents, he gives the servants five, two, and one thousand, right? You guys remember that? Okay, he gives them that. There's always a test for the trust. The test is what we, how will you steward the money? The trust was now you get a city. That's a big jump. Here's a thousand bucks. Here's a city. You're the mayor of the city now. You know, that's like, that's a big jump. Sometimes God is testing us in the smallest things to do something way bigger than we thought was possible. But he's strengthening us to have staying power. Okay, because there, I'll tell you, can I be honest with you guys as the pastor? There are some Sundays I leave here and I'm like, we have the greatest church on earth. God is moving. I am truly blessed and highly favored. I love everything about church. And there are other Sundays I leave here, I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm failing. <sighs> what happened there? 
I don't even know if I was coherent at part of my message. You know, I go through emotional oh, roller coasters, okay? They, they call it the Monday preaching blues. I need to have staying power to go, you know what? Even if I lost my coherency during one of my messages and you couldn't understand what I was saying or my points were jumbled, even if the Holy Spirit's still there, the Holy Spirit's still here. He's still growing his church. He's looking to grow his people. He loves you so he can use, hey, he used a donkey with Balaam. He could probably use me. I have to have that staying power in my heart. And we foster that in prayer. Do you have things in your world that you've been praying for for years? Don't, don't, the, the wealth of weight and gratitude you're building when God breaks that through. Like, don't quit. Have staying power with God. If God said it, then you pray until something happens. If God said it, then you pray until something happens. You have the strength. Here's where the strength comes. Do you build your life on circumstance and then talk to Jesus about the circumstance? He's in the pastor's seat. Hey, look at this. This is what's going on. Nothing wrong with talking to Jesus about what's going on, but do you build your life on the circumstance and then talk to Jesus about that? Or do you build your life on what the Bible says and what the word of God says and the, and the prophetic words you've gotten? Do you build your life on that and you talk to Jesus about that? You say, hey, Jesus, remember when you said that you, by your stripes, I'm healed? Does your prayer life look like you talking to Jesus about what he said? Does it look like you talking the Holy Spirit, what he said? Because when your prayer life begins to line up, God just goes, okay, yeah, 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 you're getting it. You're getting it. You're there. You're partnering with me. I see faith and I can build on faith. It's building that strength inside. And I'll say it again. Building strength also comes from doing life with people. If you're like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to have that faith. You know what? Just get around someone that faith. Come to our, our prayer meetings. You know, if you need faith, I just go hang out with John Day. He's always got faith. He's always on to the next thing. He's like, ah, business is gonna blow up right now. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna get this house. Yep, that, that bigger house. We're gonna get that house. Yep, that's gonna happen. You know, I, I hang out with people that talk faith, that build faith. I'll hang out with, with Rich Bogle. I'll hang out with Andy Pugh. I'll hang out with people that when I'm, my faith battery's low, I'm hearing faith come out of their mouth. Do life with people. Get around faith-filled people. Because you're building, you're, we're praying for strength. Next thing, pray for the fight. Like I said, 1 Samuel 38, David inquired of the Lord, shall, shall I pursue the troops? Shall I overtake them? This seems like an obvious fight to go get. This guy's a fighter, right? And fighters are usually reactionary. If you punch me in the face, I don't know why you do that, but if you did do that, I just want you to know, before I think, I may punch back. It's just, it's reactionary. And so if you come after my family, I'm thinking David's like, no, what? why ask? But David has fostered such a prayer life that he goes, I can't take over. This thing has been riding on a razor's edge for too many years. I've took this group of ragtag misfits and I've created mighty men. I'm way out of my league. God, what do I do right now? What do I do right now? And you know, what breaks my heart is when, 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 Men and women don't have a prayer life. They become subject to emotions. They, become, they begin to be led by their emotions and then they'll, if they wanna protect themselves, they'll say, oh, I feel like God said. But I'm like, wait, I, did you ask for any Christian counsel? Like, did you, did you pray with another person? Because, you know, we'll use dating, for example. I've seen girls and I'm like, they're beautiful, they're talented, they love Jesus. And then they, they, they pick the guy and I'm like, hey, uh, I'm not judging the guy, but he's not there yet. And you know, but they're like, oh, but God told me. I'm like, did God tell you or did you tell God that he's hot and then just say, please don't say no and you didn't hear anything so you ran over there, okay? That, just uh, saying, just saying, not saying, just saying, okay? Not saying anything, just saying something, okay? No, sorry, I didn't mean to just pick on the ladies. I can pick on the dudes too. Maybe right now you're fighting for your career. You're like, you know what? We're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna take, this thing's gonna take off. This business is gonna take off. We're gonna, we're gonna dominate in the marketplace. We're gonna win this thing. And God say, hey, wait a minute. I, I'm right now, I need you to fight for your kids. You're in the wrong fight, buddy. You're in the wrong fight. I need you to fight for your wife because she's wondering if it's worth it. And see, we need to have a, a, a prayer life where we're asking God, what's the fight? You know, there are some fights you're not allowed to fight and God doesn't want you to fight. And if you fight them, you're cursed the blessing. Wow. Let's look at David for an example. 
before this moment, there was a fight that seemed pretty obvious to me. And I, I all, you, you, you struggle with realizing, once again, he doesn't know he's in the Bible. And he's being hunted by a king that has turned his back on God and is actually doing some pretty bad stuff. And he never fights that fight. Never once. Isn't that amazing? We can bring the keys up. I'm gonna, close, I'm gonna get done early. Never trust a pastor when they say that, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> Jesus, help me. Fast forward a few years before this story, David's on the run from a mad king who's jealous and he's hiding in a cave. And all, him and his men, deep cave, and who, lo and behold, who walks in that very cave by himself to relieve himself? It's King Saul. And, you know, he's in this moment and, and his men are, you know, whispering, David, David, this is it. This is it. This, this is God. He said you're gonna be king. This guy's trying to kill you. It's totally justified. It's self-defense. Strike him down. You're king. It's over. No more hiding in caves. No more running. No more zigzag. David, I can only imagine from spending years in a prayer life. And this is point number three, pray for honor. You see, when honor flows through our lives, up, side to side, and down, honor is not just how you treat leaders. In fact, if you only honor leaders, you're operating in a Jezebel spirit. <clears throat> honor is how you treat people below you, people side to side and people above. And so David, over years of praying, had begun to understand his call. I'm called to be king. I camp there. I have strength in this word. I'm going to trust God. No matter what my zigzag looks like, I trust you, Lord, that you said it and it will come to pass. But then because he had been praying over this, I believe he began to see what kind of king he would want to be. And, and, and in the pressure and in the pain of Saul turning on him, he got in his heart, you know, God, whenever I talk to you, you're so gracious. You're so kind. You're so loving. You always tell me you believe in me. You honor me. You died for me. And then I look side to side and I say, you know, I should honor my wife. I should take care of her. I should be a good husband. I should strive to be a better husband. I honor my friends who are there for me. I honor even those people that <clears throat> cut me off on the freeway and temporarily suspended my salvation. And <clears throat> Maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they're in an emergency. Maybe they're in a hurry. Whatever it is, I begin to get honor flowing in my life. So go to King David, and, and he realizes that although this man is not acting honorable, one day I'll sit in that position and I want to honor the position. And so he tells the men, no, we're not going to strike him. This fight, God said, is his. This is the guy who would kill giants. This is the guy who, who uh, <clears throat> never stepped down from a battle. But he knew where his fight was. And my point, point number three, is honoring the Lord by asking him, where's my fight? So you might be in your zigzag, and maybe your zigzag is financial. You go, God, you know, I, I started tithing and I'm following your principles in the word. And, and you know, and, and, and I went to prayer and I, and I got prayer, I got prayer and somebody even had a word for me and I'm reading your word and your word says that you give us the power to create wealth. And your word says that we're the head, not the tail. And your word says that, you know, I'm meant to, <clears throat> be blessed to be a blessing. Your word says all this stuff. And you say, you know, and you're, and you're in that zigzag where you're like, but it's so tight right now. The bills are so tight. Or maybe in your marriage, you know, God loves family, loves marriage, and it's just on the rocks. You're in the zigzag, but are you asking God, where's my fight? Because while, while you might say, well, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta work harder. I gotta go work, you know, 80 hour work weeks right now. He might say, no, 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 son. I know you're looking for that word. I know you're in a struggle. But right now your fight is for your wife. It's just trusting the Lord. So David's fight wasn't to go 
you know, maybe what he would have done is he would have hit this moment and he would have said, you know, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this. You're the mighty men. I'm supposed to be king. Let's go get Saul right now. I can't take it anymore. I'm not gonna be on the run. I'm gonna take the kingdom by force. But he didn't. There's breakthrough ready for you. There is a breakthrough anointing in the house today. Just don't quit in the zigzag. Don't quit in the zigzag. Right now, maybe you're in the zigzag. I'm gonna get the band up here. Can you honor the word of God in your life and camp your life not on, not on the circumstance, but on what his word says? Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I believe that breakthrough's on its way. And I believe that right now, when you're in your zigzag, this message is to release least what you don't realize is that while you're in this moment, if you will trust God and step up to the fight he is asking you to fight, in the background, he's fulfilling the thing that, 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 that the full purpose that he has. That is the coinciding with knowing that God is in control, but we have a faith step to take. It's stepping into faith and saying, you know what? I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna quit on my marriage, even though it's looking bad. I'm not gonna quit pursuing this business endeavor, even though I don't see, I'm not gonna quit believing for this baby. I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna stand here. And unless God says differently, unless there's a transition, I'm gonna pray until something happens. And I believe this, let me prophesy this. God is on the move in this valley. And I feel that he almost says he doesn't have a whole lot of time because when you get your breakthrough, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna talk to people and people are gonna see your breakthrough. And so I believe God is in, in, in a bit of not a rush. He's never rushed, but the time is now. The time is now for God to do what he said he's gonna do. Maybe I believe there's somebody in the room 20 years 20 years you've been believing for. I don't know who that is, but I heard the word 20 years. 20 years you've been waiting, and this is the year. This is the year, 2021. So we're already almost half, we're more than halfway through it. So this is the year. I believe that people right now, you have to understand <clears throat> this is the zigzag. Would you all raise to your feet? What we're gonna do today is we're going to step out in faith. That second song we sang earlier, I wanna sing that song again. For those of you who were there before the worship was over. For others, it might be the first time you heard this song, but I love you. I have kids, I understand. But. This song is a victorious song. How you get, listen, when I'm feeling weak, you know what I don't like? I don't like melancholy worship. I don't like the contemplative, you know. I like, I like the victorious songs. I like my praise songs. Because, you know, when I'm, when I'm like, just had a mountaintop, go ahead, play the chill Caleb Christian music radio station. I'm, I'm down, okay? Actually, I never liked that station. But anyways. <laughs> but when you're really, when you're in your zigzag, you don't need a woe is me. You need a declarative song. You need to let your situation know who your God is. You need to tell, so today we're going to sing a song, but here's what I want you to do. If you're in a zigzag, in a test, in a moment where it doesn't look like it's supposed to look, whatever that situation is, right now, I want you to picture that thing sitting right and standing right in front of you and you're gonna tell it, sit down, sit down. Hey, health bill, sit down. Hey, kid on drugs, sit down. That situation, whatever it is, picture it sitting down and you tell it, you're going to listen to me worship. You're going to listen to me tell you how big my God is. You're about to get 
blasted with the word of God. Because I ain't quitting. Because just like David didn't know, what you don't know is Acts, what you need to remember is Acts never ended. God is still growing his church. We're still a part of an epic story. And you're his people. So he wants to use you to tell that story in Salt Lake City. He wants to use you to tell that story. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.